Hey, girl writes what? Uh, this is Guthrie Prentice, the practitioner. Um, I would be writing the. I would be uh sitting up wearing my suit. Uh, what have you, making this video response? But I was just on my way to bed when I came across your video. Uh, I've watched a few of your others, and I actually agree with most of what you had to say. Uh, particularly with this video, I actually agree that there was a large chunk of what you had to say, and most of the sci and all the scientific sources were accurate. However, I do believe that the um. I do believe that the, how do I put this, the traits that we've been noticing, both uh, benevolent sexism and monogamy, um, are limited to most elements of Western society. Uh, the reason I uh, answer that, the reason I mention this, is because there are instances which I'm wondering how they might be, uh, one of which is how I'm wondering how it might be benevolent sexism, and the second of where there actually is an example of polyamory, uh, sorry, polyandry to be more precise, uh, which actually worked uh, for the environment which it, which it was in. Uh, the first piece I'm going to mention is the polyandry piece. Uh, in Tibet, uh, there was an issue for quite a few hundred years where there was a shortage of women. And by that I mean that the men outnumbered the women approximately two to one. The Tibetans developed this particularly unique system of how to handle this by having the, ch uh, the chance for one woman to marry two husbands. And both husbands would um, provide resources to the children of the collective marriage, and the woman would be treated uh, with, you know, extra, uh, what's the word, um, protection or what have you, by both husbands, uh, simply because of the fact that there weren't enough women to go around for, uh, for, um, uh, for wives. My point being with this is that, uh, as you said, in certain circumstances, it seems that monogamy has been the most successful um, reproductive model. I would argue that that is in certain parts of the world. Uh, I would argue that, uh, with the Tibetan example in this case, uh, that, there, that it wasn't uh, everywhere. It was the most successful model in Western society and in quite a few other places. Just thought I'd bring that up. The other issue is I wanted to ask you whether or not benevolent sexism stretches to the entire world or just to Western society. To be more precise, I want to ask regarding the concept of female genital mutilation. Now, as far as I understand the reasoning behind this and the history behind it, this is an African tradition uh, which stretched into, the middle, into certain sections of the Middle East under Sharia law, but as far as I know, the, the tradition existed in Africa far before Islam reached there. And the supposed reason being that it would prevent a woman from cheating on her husband. Now, I have to ask, how does removing the pleasure center from a woman come from benevolent sexism? How is this a benevolent, uh, how do I put this? How is this a benevolent gesture towards women? How is this helping their protection? How is this helping their survival? How is this, you know, how is this helping men uh, protect their survival? How is this helping them in terms of benevolence? You know, how is, the, how is this a, building, a benevolent move? So, or how is this a benevolent tradition? Um, I'd like your thoughts on this girl writes what, because if it is benevolent, um, then I stand corrected, and this, and benevolent, and sexism uh, was a, were, uh, was a benevolent source worldwide, uh, but if, if female genital mutilation uh, as we call it now, or clitoridectomy, as the correct scientific term is, uh, as a tradition, was not benevolent, then we have a hole in the model, and I'm kind of curious in terms of evolutionary development, uh, both of our society and as a species, where something like this would have come in um, as a, a, you know, how would, how would this have been part of the evolutionary model? How would this have been part of a good reproductive system, uh, an efficient re uh, evolutionarily, uh, reproductive system evolutionarily. Sorry, I know I'm kind of rambling here a bit, but it's late at night and I'm kind of half asleep as I'm doing this video. Anyway, if you could post a video response back or private message me um, to let me know uh, how these two, uh, uh, how female genital mutilation is beneficial, uh, or sorry, let me rephrase that, how female genital mutilation came from a benevolent source, I'm all for hearing it. But um, if it didn't come from a benevolent source, I'd like to know how it was evolutionarily beneficial. Again, it just seems to be a hole in the, in the model, and I'd just like an answer regarding it. So, thanks again. Uh, girl writes what? Uh, 
again, uh, your videos are thought provoking as always. And as I said, I agree with practically all of what you said. But I'm just curious about the applicability of this uh, benevolent sexism cause to the entire world and whether or not this only applies to Western society. Again, just a thought. Like to know more. Catch you later. Bye-bye.